I've had people ask me how I made the uh, suturing practice station that you see me use on my YouTube channel. So I thought I would do a demo video so you can see how to make it yourself. So these are the, well, let me tell you first, I tried pig skin, I tried pig's feet, I tried chicken breasts and banana peels and nothing worked as well as when I finally took a Swiffer mop head, you know, that paper and wrapped an ace around it and used a six inch ace. And that I found the flexibility of the ace mimicked the skin really well. So it was really crude and I wanted to come up with something that looked more professional that I could use for the um, suturing live presentations that I do. So I'm going to tell you what the supplies are. A tile or a metal plate that I got from Lowe's or Home Depot. And I would sit I did this because I was carrying 20 of them. I didn't want to carry 20 bricks. But if you're only making one of them, I would suggest you use a brick because that gives you some nice weight for it. Then you choose any color felt or material that you want. This is kind of like a suede like that you want for your dermis. You choose some batting to make your dermis a little bit thicker. An ace, you either use a three inch, six inch ace cut in half, which is what this is, or a four inch ace not cut in half. And then you have a foam, and I like this foam that's kind of a memory foamish type because it's soft and you can actually keep your incision, quote, incision a little bit wider so that um, it kind of, you have to tie under tension and mimics. And then you need a felt. And I used a felt because I wanted something that would have traction. So if you put this on a surface that's textured like something with material on it, it's not going to slide. So that was why I chose that. Now let's go through the steps of how to actually put it together. So you take your, your dermis, your quote dermis, and you fold it around the batting. And then you would attach it and sew it. And I may use suture instead of sew, but you know, it's just because I'm thinking about the operating room. Then you sew it here to the ace and you do that twice because you have the two sides of the incision. So what you end up with is two pieces like this. So you take your two pieces and you put them colored sides together and then you want to sew the two sides of the ace together up over the dermis and over the top of the brick so you can mimic the corner of an incision. So you would sew it here. So when you're done sewing, you open it, you would have an incision open here and it'd be sewed up to here. So the next one will show you what that looks like. This is actually one step further. So you've had that piece that you put on your felt. You're ready to put it on the felt. But before you sew this part here, you want to take that piece and sew it onto the felt right here. So you would fold this piece over here and fold here and then sew here. And then you do the same to this side. You would fold this over and sew it along the edge to sew it onto the, the felt backing. And then you end up with that. And then you would fold your ace over and then you sew the ace along the edge here. And then you're ready for your last piece. When I first did it, it took four hours because I hadn't learned some of the shortcuts, this, but this is some of the shortcuts. So now you're ready to take that. And this is the only part that I do by hand now, is you take it and you hand sew it over your brick or your tile and, and foam, and your brick and foam, with whichever one you're using. So the fin finished products look like, just wanted to show you the two. This is the one with the metal plate, so it's a little bit lighter, uh, but it's still effective. And this one here, you can see, is um, the brick, and it has a lot more weight to it. And this is the one that I usually use. So this is the one I would suggest if you're only doing one. And there you have it. So good luck with it.